Derby. It's Max Broken Foul back to Bonanza down the rail. Mr. Expedient. Oh, my. Speed stretch approaching the wire. And it's going to be Smuggler's Hole to take the new foul to the nine. That is going to be the Derby. Manitoba Jockey Club acknowledges that we are on Treaty 1 territory and that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oja Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this land. No countdown, everybody's sleeping. And welcome everybody to ASD Live, brought to you by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries. Day 41 on the racing calendar. Quick look back at last week's racing action. Who was hot? Well, Jockey Chavi and Chow was. He had two wins on Wednesday's card, but also Sheldon Chickeness. He had two wins and both of them aboard Jerry Gorno trained horses. So on the jockey side, Jorge Carreno up by 18 on Ronaldo Cumberbatch and Chavi and Chow back in third on the trainer side. Jerry Gorno has good breathing room that he has got over the last week. He's now up by 11 over Jared Brown and up by 15 over Shelly Brown. Last week, we've seen uh, horses go to the lead, go wire to wire and also come off the pace. So stretch. What did you see on the track? Yeah, well, I'll just quickly start by, I can't believe there's only 10 days left, Kurt. It's uh, just f f flowing by. It's, it's quite amazing. Um, and so thanking everybody for tuning in. And, and, uh, 
and staying with us. And staying with us, yeah. We haven't sure. annoyed everybody. <laughs> well, Which is a good thing. That is a great thing, yeah. And so the payouts have been really good all year, and mainly because of the handle, and that's thanks to everybody out there supporting us. So, so full credit uh, to everybody that, uh, like you said, is staying with us and putting up with us. Um, in regards to the track last week, uh, it's interesting, uh, just doing the, the variance myself, Monday was a little bit slow. Then by Tuesday, it got a little more even and kind of got faster and faster as the, as the week went. And then by, by uh, Wednesday, the early fractions were actually above par and then finishing up pretty evenly. So we actually had perfect weather all week and with no rain. So it completely makes sense. We've got a little wind today, but n- no rain whatsoever. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, just got to mention, we got uh, Labor Day. It's one of the days I always look forward to is like, work at the golf course, and then rush to the afternoon racing, and, and that was on Monday. Now that was our old uh, schedule. But I think it's even better now. We get evening racing, so you can spend all afternoon and, and listen to us uh, in the evening. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky card, another one of those puzzling ones, but uh, isn't it always, uh, Kurt? So Yeah, no doubt about it. The easier they look. It ends up in the end, usually the tougher they are. Well, let's kick things off here. We have a $5,000 claimer for Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota bred, non-two lifers. They're going to go six furlongs. Scratch number two, right time. Scratch number six, devil's time. So we're left with a quartet here in race one. Yeah, three boys, one girl. Uh, The scratch just kind of changed my picks. I I kind of just adjusted it. Uh, This is one of these races. None of the horses run to the the par level of this. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a guess and, and I'm kind of just searching. I'm kind of glad it's in the first race, kind of warm up for the week. <laughs> um, I, I originally, I didn't have the one in the top three and then I decided why not? Uh, the one win that uh, he had was on the rail, went gate to wire and kind of stole it. And so uh, yes, the distance might be a question, but just the other one seemed to come a little too far back and maybe the one gets brave and, and kind of keeps going uh, from there. Then the three, which is probably the favorite, and, and uh, throw out the last race completely. Has been running very well for this level all season long, going the two, ter- the one turn. Um, runs back to the second or third back is is kind of the most likely winner. It's just uh, like I said, it should be there. And then the five, yes, yes, she's the filly of the group. Uh, in her maiden race, kind of this level, she basically crushed crushed uh, the horses and looked good doing it. It's kind of lightly raced. So I think there's a little more upside for her. You get a trainer change. Again, maybe a shot at an upset. It's, it's all four of them probably could potentially win with the right, right day. Uh, one, three, five. Yeah, I'm with you, but uh, I have to go to number three. Call me captain. I am throwing that last race out. And that makes the horse five for five in the money. Ran a good one, two outs go running second to guaranteed delivery who came back to win that open mile and uh, went wire to wire in there. The previous start, a big win by five lengths, sitting just off the leaders, not a lot of speed in here. So if Call Me Captain gets up anywhere near that lead early on, I think this is a galloping winner. I do like number five HD's hope. They are adding a tongue tie on today, lone filly against the boys. But yeah, that maiden breaker was very impressive. Sat back, swooped them all, by the head of the lane and carried on to an easy victory and even didn't run bad at fifth beat and 12 to Maybella, Artisan Dancer and Barefoot Dancer. That was actually a good race. The last one was a little discouraging, but I think the horse is much better than that. Expect a better effort today. So that's why it's my second selection. And I threw in the one we need VLTs, please. Because it did go wire to wire and there isn't a lot of speed. Yes, got beat by the other ones, but definitely I think this course is good enough even to win. So that's my top three, three, five, and one. Now we're going to carry on to race number two, a $5,000 claimer for Phillies and Mayors three and up that are non two lifers. They're going to go seven and a half for a long stretch. Who do you like? Yes, as I mentioned about puzzling races, we've got one. And then unfortunately, another race that all of them are running below par. So this is when it, it just opens it up. I'm going to go with, with the, the five, the Philly that, uh, Seemed to be getting a little bit better. Won the last, uh, won the last start. I like it this time of year. If you remember on Wednesday, a horse won the main and then came back and, and won again. And so I, I kind of like seeing that at this time of year where the others are kind of stuck in the, the condition. I think the horse can stock the four horse. Uh, that horse will go out and see how far she can go. 
but I think the, the five can just kind of take over from there and, and then uh, hold off the other ones. The one did look very good last time and, and uh, got bet down early. And I was kind of surprised that the horse was bet down so much early. It was a horse that I didn't like that much. And then you look back and there's reasons why. Real nice clothes. Uh, certainly certainly can win the race. And then I'll go back and back to the two horse. I backed this horse last time because of the two back. But the horse was so far back, two back, it was almost as far back last time. So if Antonio has the horse that far back, horse is not going to be there if he can get this horse a little bit closer who knows maybe a bit of an upset in there but uh i'll still go five one and two yeah stretch i seen the same thing he did on rathmeister that early money and we were kind of throwing it out and then rathmeister ran absolutely huge horse does have problems getting out of the starting gate but didn't last time out and supposedly didn't when i watched the video as it was in fargo when it ran fourth beaten 13th maybe he's corrected that a little bit if he does get out of the gate, comes back to that last race, I think she's the one to beat. I also like the five horse, Victoriaville. I liked her last time out against Wits Queso. I thought would have been loose speed after running the Z pattern in the previous three starts, showing speed, falling back, coming back on, put it all together last time out and looked good doing it. If missing the point doesn't go out to the front and gives Victoriaville a free lead, I think she could be long gone in here. And I do like number three, Hazy Winter. I've watched this horse a couple times. Came with a couple big closes late. Finally showed it last time out at 35 to 1. Was beaten by Rathmeister in there. But I just like the way this horse ran. It was finally a wake-up call. Maybe it just wanted to go around two turns with a little bit of speed up front to run at, which could definitely happen with the four or five in here. So I'm taking one, five, and three. Now we're carrying on to race number three, kicking off jackpot pick five wagering an allowance race for Philly two-year-olds. They're going to go five furlongs, field of eight have assembled, and should be an interesting one with a big favorite. Yeah, I agree. It's nice to see we got eight, eight two-year-olds in there, and, and just off camera, Kurt was saying there, there's a bunch of them ready to run, so potentially see that. There's another car tomorrow with the two-year-olds as well. And there's 11 in there. 11 in there. That's going to be fun. Okay. Yeah, as mentioned, the, the two horse or the eight horse is going to be the big favorite, and and if you followed us along, that you know I don't like taking horse that finishes second all the time. This is this one extremely different. It just has been unlucky of the competition that the horse has raced against. It's lost twice to the same horse, almost beat uh, who was who we listen a lady cop, and and then the last one uh, another good uh, two year old. So yes, did finish second. There's none of. I don't believe that there's any of these horses in here. Uh, undefeated? No. Uh, undefeated. Un <laughs> undefeated. Lots of undefeated horses. There are lots of. <laughs> yeah, that's very, very. True. Someone's gonna go on a roll. Somebody after this potentially race. could go on a roll. Absolutely good call. Um, th that is already established. There's a couple firsters. We'll hear from Kurt about those. Uh, how good they might be. Um, so. If I also like the big angle of cutting back from six down to five, that is big for two-year-olds. So I think that's going to help. This horse will sit just off and probably take over late. And then for me, it's kind of a bit of a guess for second and third. Um, I've gone with the horses that have started already. I've gone with the seven as, as uh, the top uh, or second selection. Run evenly both starts. I think that's good enough. Yes, it's lost to uh, a couple of them in here. But I just think that evenly maintenance work coming in certainly can uh, be right there in second. And then I'll go to the four as a, a give another chance to. This horse was bet down quite a bit in the first start. Didn't show anything. And then at a maintenance work, we've seen how good two uh, second starts some of these horses have been across the board all year. I'm going to take a shot. 12 to 1 morning line. Might be a wake up. Uh, something may must have happened potentially and I, i'm going to take a shot because the price is there 874 yeah i'm with you on russian pearl losing to undefeated horses but running so game and last time out i love my life had it all by himself and, and was a walk away winner in there but russian pearl tried every step of the way i like that this horse can come off the pace or press the lead whatever dwight lewis wants to do and this horse will be well-respected in here. And this is the horse to beat. Another horse I like is one of the first-time starters. Number one, Silver Creek Lady. Uncle Mo, the sire, was the winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Had five wins and eight starts. Over $1.6 in earnings. 
and the mom was a three-time winner of 157,000K and ran the first two times at Woodbine for maiden allowance, going five furlongs, didn't win either of them, but did run second. So it shows that she has speed. There's a bunch of siblings, uh, five-time winner, 100K, one that only ran twice, had a win in a second. Another one that uh, is a maiden, a one-time winner, five furlongs on the turf. Another maiden allowance winner at Keeneland, and that is a full sibling. And another one, seven starts, three wins, and the other three did not run. So it's a family that likes running short and winning early. So that's why I like Silver Creek Lady. And I also like number two, Anna Cluzana, ran a good race first time out, made a middle move in there. Obviously couldn't catch the leader as Spitting Kitten was long gone in the comeback race. Had to run against a German, Lady Cop and Arrogance. Another tough field. Drops in, I think, a little bit easier in here. So I'm taking the two for third. And the other one, Bad Pixie, the other first-time starter, the Dad Nonios, one from six furlongs to a mile 16th. Almost a half a million dollars in earnings. And look who the eight sire is. Yeah, that's that Nonios. And Bad Cat was a one-time winner of 10000 and won at the maiden restricted $5,000 level. And this is the first full. I'm going to tap for a little bit later. So I'm going to take eight, one, and two. Now we're going to carry on to race number four, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering, a $2,500 claimer for three-year-olds and up that are non-two of the year or non-four lifers. Only going to go five furlong stretch. What do you got? Well, I've got the same as you, Kurt. Yep, that kind of looks like it. <laughs> All right, lots, yeah, there's lots of early pace in here, and, and it's a matter of who can stalk. And the, the key is you're watching the replays and just what the jockey is, is doing on some of the horses. You're going to see sometimes the jockeys absolutely just send and then try to keep up, and then there's others that are just a little bit sharper and can sit off. That's what I saw on the six last time. Uh, Ronald Alley. Uh, moved up. The horse actually kind of pulled him to the lead, and, and he kind of still rated him on the outside. So I, th I think that th that's going to be a similar trip. It can just sit back and make that middle move. It lost to a better horse that was in for 2500 Both and I, both Kurt and I have backed this horse, the two winners at Danza Rebel, and uh, that horse is just a touch above these. I think uh, if this horse runs back to the Turf Paradise races, and it looks like the horse is getting back there. I think the horse is going to be uh, tough to beat in there. And uh, I'll then go to the four as my, my second selection. Yes, the Mountaineer horses have had very limited success. But the key on this one is this horse is dropping right to the bottoms. The, there's solid figures in here. There is a chance that this horse could clear. And, the, and even if battles, just the class might just keep going. So three of seven at the, at the distance in first. Um, yeah, I just I just think this horse is uh, uh, could be the upsetter if it clears and just gets away on the six. And then the last one, uh, second start over the track, was a Mountaineer horse. Ran game and pressed the whole way around. So I do like that. I expect a, a little bit of improvement. And if it does, that certainly could be enough. So 6-4-2. Yeah, I've seen the same thing as you, Stretch, on number six, Wake Up Call. What a great race last time out. This is a horse that was need to lead, all or nothing. And... He just sat there and, as Stretch said, dragged Ronald Alley to the lead, battled every step of the way, and ended up losing the photo to Danza Rebel. Now that they're going five-eighths of a mile, watch Ronald Alley ride this horse a little bit stronger early on. And if it does do that, I think the speed of the race, who has the most, is the one astonishing tweet. But I just don't think it can go five furlongs. I think it's one of those four, four-and-a-half specialists so I think Wake Up Call is going to be real close. Has that back class. Definitely the big one to beat in here. Brightologist, some good races. And same thing as Stretch Mountaineer Horses. Not doing well here at Assiniboine Downs so far. They aren't lighting it up. But this is one who can definitely do that. Has showed some staying power even when it doesn't make the lead. And you get the top jock. And number two, Laughing Latinos, ran a good race on the inside of Wake Up Call. Blasted all the way to the wire, cuts back a half a furlong. I think it's those three, six, four, and two. Now we're going to carry on to race number five, a $7,500 claimer. For three-year-olds and up, they're going to go six furlongs. Looks like we see this one the same way too, Stretch. Or you just were running out of time and just 
put the same pictures I did. Anyway, <laughs> a very competitive race. Yeah, we probably do see it exactly or very similar. It's on the race shape. I think there's a, a definitely an expect uh, expected early pace battle in here. And so I'm going to go to the, hor the horse on the outside that can close. I like the post position quite a bit for Mark Ewell. This horse was a claimer of the year last year. Is running was running very com uh, competitive at a higher level. And yes, I will use Kurt's rule about being within five lengths. And, and you just look at those horses that are in there. They would be extremely tough to beat in this field. I think Carino's going to, he's back on top, on, on uh, Jock. And then he's, he's won with this horse multiple times. So he's just going to put this horse in a nice spot. And watch this. I like when this horse makes that wide move on the turn. Expecting to see that. Um, three the next uh, ran actually two good last time to lose. It was just a, a real good race. Uh, made that middle move, pressed, opened up, and just kind of got beat late. And in fact, if that horse runs the same race, I think it could upset the six. And then uh, back to into the deep, I did like this horse a little bit last time. Um, pressed last time, made a nice move, absolutely woke up. Who knows, this could be a possible upset in here for sure. It's lightly raced. I do like that. And so I'll go six, three, and one. Yeah, stretch. I see piles of speed in here in the deep, big Tony. Singing, crying, Dubai, not far away. Eagle Bine has to go to the front. And Yola came off the pace two outs ago, was stumbling out of the gate. But last time, pressured the lead once again. What does Mark Ewell do? Sits back in his own little race in behind. And then he comes with a flourish at the end. I think that is super valuable, this race. With everybody else having the early speed, they will be battling. So I think Mark Ewell picks up all the pieces of tiring leaders. I also like the three singing crying Dubai. That last race was lights out, but Spire just got up in the final bob at the end to get that win. But this is a horse that's run really well here at the Downs, three for four since arriving. And I've seen the same thing on In the Deep, lightly raced, draws inside. I think the inside will be valuable in here. This is a horse that likes to go a rut of ground better than sprinting, but ran a great sprint race last time out duking it out with everybody else so that's my third selection and that's how i came up with six three and one now we're carrying on to race number six a five thousand dollar claimer the phillies mares three and up they're gonna go five and a half furlongs the maidens stretch who do you like okay I, i'm gonna go with the invader from uh, century mile uh makes a makes a big drop in class is uh only third start of the year do i i do like that watching the replay the horse made made a small move on on the turn in a little bit classier and then then flattened out. I, I thought the horse came up a little bit short, and so I think just with the third start potentially uh, and shortening up uh, just will help that much more. I think the horse will carry it a little bit farther, and and that should be enough in this race. Just because I'm not sure anybody can carry the distance, the even the five and a half in uh, distance in here. Uh, but I will go to the speed because that's how sometimes these maidens uh, steal it. They get brave on the front end when they get loose. And we've got the big drop maiden special weight dropper uh, um, with Sassy Storman. Go actually got the lead, which is impressive to get the lead in, in the maiden special weight. There's some pretty good uh, horses in that field. I also do like the Carino sticks. And if the horse can clear, may just kind of keep going. And then I'll go with an invader from Batera Park, uh, has run evenly going long, and but that's all you really need in this bunch is to run evenly. And the, you may notice that Ruby and the Stars, a few back, that that horse had uh, basically similar f figures, and it came here and won its, won its maiden. So that's kind of my comparison on that one. Uh, maybe an upset chance at 10 to 1. So I'll go 6, 5, and 7. Yeah, I do respect number 6, Dragon Wing, on the drop. Running ev evenly at Century Mile, I think this horse is sitting on a win. I just don't like the low buyer numbers on it. That's kind of thrown me a little, but definitely a couple good races. I do like number five, Sassy Storman, gets to drop down to this five level, and that's usually an absolute huge drop. They added blinkers last time out, showed a lot more early speed, didn't have the staying power I would have liked to see, but usually that staying power goes with the class drop, so I think this horse will last a little bit longer. I ended up taking number eight, always the little one, the first time starter on top. This one has seven siblings, and uh, one is a full sibling. The rest, well, they're all a bunch of maidens and really haven't done anything. But the full sibling, that one's a runner. Five wins, 
over 100K in earnings, went from six furlongs to a mile, one first time out, and this horse has a nice work coming in, 36 and four. The, the dad, Governor Charlie, had two wins, made a half a million dollars. The mom was, won a route, the mile and an eight Sunland Park Derby, and it made over 88K in California. So I'm taking a shot on the first time starter here late in the year, getting to the racetrack with the night's work. <laughs> and when you get a full running really well, you got to take a second look. So why not take a shot on the eight? I'm going to give you eight, six, and five. Now we're carrying on to race number seven, a $3,500 claimer. For three-year-olds and up, they're going to go seven and a half for a long stretch. A wide open race. It is a wide open race. Uh, it's a great race to finish it off. The card actually finishes off really solid for for that pick four. So looking forward to that. Um, I think there's a potential early pace battle in in here. It can go a few different ways. And so I'm going to go to the five as my top selection. I actually didn't like how this horse ran last time by going to the lead. I did like rail splitter last time that the horse would probably sit just off. The horse runs much better just sitting off the pace. And if, if that's the case, sits off, I think the horse is going to run something like the two or three back races and both of those would be good enough to win the races um again and of course uh the only negative is now the fifth rider in five races so i don't know if if the jockey doesn't like it or the trainer's not liking the rider or whatever the case is it's always concerned when when uh the jockeys keep leaving this horse for whatever reason it might be but i do think the horse is the class and a stocking trip gets the horse there i will go to the three as my second selection Ran an absolute huge race last year, last time out. Had some pressure, had some trouble on the outside. Cleared from the not, post nine going uh, seven and a half furlongs. This is probably one of the few that has won going seven or seven and a half all year long. Actually makes a bit of a drop. Yes, there is other speed and potentially that could hurt the horse if, if depending on how much battling the, the outside horse is in there. But just that last race was so impressive, I had to include it. And then I'm going to go to the one as my kind of long shot, closing late up the rail. Um, yes, Plum Lucky was in for the bottoms, but the race was such a good race. The figures were there. This horse usually runs for 3,500. Could just have woken, starting to wake up and get back uh, on form. And if there is that pace battle and the five gets involved, I need a, a good closer. Five, three, one. Yeah, Stretch, I see speed in here. The three, my cowboy, and the eight, all for truth. Both of them have good speed. I think All for Truth might have even more than my Cowboy. So I see a real heated pace here. Yes, I took Rail Splitter, but this horse might get into that pace. And if that does happen, I think they all back up out of there. But if that Rail Splitter shows up that was early on in the year, sitting fifth and blowing the doors off them by five, and they went to a stake after that, that's how confident they were. This horse has been regressing since then. But that drop in class from 75 to 35, missing the $5,000 level, that should bridge the gap. The horse got beat by seven in an all-out duel where the ralliers ended up running one, two. So I still got to keep it on top with a little reservation there. But I am going to take number four, Barley Boy. I haven't taken it in a while since it hit the winner circle at eight to one. But I think this race just might set up for a decent closer in here. And that could be Barley Boy last time out for 5,000. Only got beat by three and a half to my cowboy, who did go wire to wire. Uchi Kuchi Sam was right there in the mix. Ran a very good second, and this horse did rally from the back. I think it's waking up here late in the season. I think this is a great long shot. I might even put this one in the wind tab of that in that last race, if I'm going to get the odds. And I like number six, Falkerson. This horse ran a big race, three outs go for 25 wide open behind Wits Coco. Came back against Gold Knight, only got beat by three lengths, just kind of staying behind the speed and going on. That could be good enough to win this race. So that's my third selection. I'm going to give you a five, four, and six. Good luck with all your selections this evening. And I'll be right back with the changes on this evening's Carter Racing.
And if everybody can get their pens and programs ready, here are the changes on this evening's seven race car to racing. Turning your programs to race number one, scratch number two, right time, and scratch number six, devil's time. Number five, HD's Hope, make the jockey Antonio Whitehall. Once again, in race number one, scratch the two, right time, scratch the six, devil's time, and number five, HD's Hope, will be ridden by Antonio Whitehall. Now turning your programs to race number two, just a few overweights, and they're on your TV monitors. Now turning your programs to race number three, kicking off jackpot pick five wagering, just some overweights, and the jackpot pick five carryover, just over $289,000. Now turning your programs to race number four, Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering, the Hustler Gray Horse Appreciation Race. And there are no changes. Now turning your programs to race number five, the Golf Mentor Group going for the green race. Just one overweight. And again, on your monitors. Now turning your programs to race number six, in race six, again, just some overweights. Now turning your programs to race number seven, our jackpot high five race of the evening. Just one overweight and the current carryover in the jackpot high five, just over $22,000. Well, an absolute beautiful night for racing here in Winnipeg. Is this Halloween? Yeah, What's going on here? The money. Or you just, I've got so much money, and you're trying to grab it in the clouds. It's Wow. Well, I don't have to borrow any yet. Not yet? No, we no. haven't. No, I've raced for seven. Right now, I'm on a roll. <laughs> yeah. I'm one in a row. <laughs> Under partly cloudy skies, the temperature 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and the track is listed as facts past as Stretch is still stunned over that one. We're going to kick things off in race number one that goes to post in 19 minutes.
Welcome down to the paddock for race number one. We're kicking off the week of racing with a $5,000 claimer from Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota breads. At our non two lifers, they're going to go six furlongs. Scratch the two right time. Scratch the six devil's time. Number five HD's hope is Antonio Whitehall. Stretch, who do you like? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a wide open race. I decided to take a chance and just go to the, the one kind of speed on the rail. The one the one win on the maiden was going uh, five and a half, carried the speed. There isn't a lot of speed in here. So these type of horses, they get loose, they get brave and maybe keep going. I think seven to two is kind of the right price. For, for That's why it's my top selection. Yeah, no doubt about it. I like number three, call me captain, throw out the last race. And this horse is five for six in the money. An impressive win three outs ago. Ran great against guaranteed delivery two outs ago. Didn't like that mile in open company. Back against the breeds. I think it's his race to lose. For sure. And the, the one that's on the up and coming, I think some of them have had a few more races. And that's the five. It's the, the one filly in the race. Um, did win by nine at the bottom level. And the last two, not so much. Has lost to the other ones. But... Uh, get some get some work, a trainer change. That might just be enough for this horse to wake up. I mentioned on ASD Live, all the horses are kind of a little bit below par, so it becomes a wide open race for me. Yeah, and Private Edison making the third start off the layoff. That's supposedly the charm. Maybe some fresh legs in the field. But let's go to our wagers here in race number one stretch. Start us off. Yeah, I, I'm starting small. As you know, if you follow along, I, I changed my size of bets uh, according to how much I like the race. I'm just doing a $5 exact wheel, one with three five. It's $10. You can spend two bucks, one with three five. And myself, I'm going a $20 early daily double, three and one. Good luck with all your wagers here in race one, and we'll see you back for race two. Right for race number one, they're going to go six furlongs for ten thousand one hundred dollars. Number one is We Need VLTs, please. Owned by Kevin Sousa, trained by Larry Sizek with Stanley Shady Jr. Number two, Right Time was scratched. Number three is Call Me Captain, owned by Sylvia Harabchak, trained by Fred Rawson with Chavi and Chow. Number four is Private Edison, owned by Virginia Vargo, trained by Elton Dickey with Dwight Lewis. Number five is HD's Hope, 
owned by Robbie Sharp, Dr. C.A. Spies, Joe Yang Canna, Ryan Cody, and Will Loftus. Trained by Shelley Brown with Antonio Whitehall. Number six, Devil's Time, was also scratched. Who's time for race number one? Four minutes away. Now, two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, taking the week off with uh, sick going six furlongs, three boys, one girl. I'm going to go to the horse that potentially could be the, the controlling speed up front, and that could happen in a small field like this. The one race uh, that the one had got the lead and, and just kept going. It, it's a question mark, can the horse get the distance? I'm getting the right price at 4-1. to one. I think that is the right price. That's the value play for sure. The three is the most likely winner in the race, but it's going to have to run down the one. And the filly, if you think the girls can beat the boys, that's the five, could come late. One, three, and five. At stretch, I went to number three, call me captain. This is the most consistent horse in the race. Throw that last one out. That was going a big distance with open company back in against the breeds where the horse ran second and previously one easy by five. I don't think call me captain will be sitting too far off the lead. So I'm saying this is the one to beat. I also like number five, HD's Hope. Antonio Whitehall aboard, ran a big race as Philly three outs ago. She needs to come back to that. And even Private Edison, the four, the longest shot, don't leave it out. Finished within three lengths of the three. Last time out getting better. Good luck here in race one.
Ghost Time! We need VLTs, please. The first to step into the starting eight. Next up, the three to five favorite. Call me captain. Two left to load. Private Edison. And now just waiting on HD's hope to the outside. The Philly will get a little extra help from the gate crew. She's now in. They're at the post. And they're off. Hopping a bit at the start was We Need VLTs, please. From the middle, call me Captain. Show some early speed, but we need VLTs, please. Recovers nicely after the slow beginning and battling on the inside. Settled back in third, HD's Hope with Private Edison just to the inside. Three and a half lengths from front to back, and it's we need VLTs, please, on the inside with Call Me Captain. Look at him in the eye, moving three wide, HD's Hope and Private Edison hugging the rail as the trailer. But it's We Need VLTs, please. Now with the advantage by a half a length through a half in 47 and three. Call me Captain, two wide, three wide, HD's Hope. And coming up the rail, Private Edison. We Need VLTs, please, digging in. With the lead by two, call me captain. Coming with a late surge inside the 16th pool. We need VLTs. Call me captain. These two noses on the wire. Looks like call me captain might have knotted out. We need VLTs, please. Third to HD's Hope and fourth to Private Edison. Stewards have requested a photograph to determine the winning horse. They went the opening quarter, 24 seconds. The half, 47 and 3. Time for the six furlongs, 114 and 4. Number three, call me captain, gets the win. Second goes to number one, we need VLTs, please. Third to number five, HD's Hope. And fourth to number four, Private Edison. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number one, that's number three, Call Me Captain. 
Call me captain. It's a big elding, four years old, by honor devil. Out of the mayor, Leesburg gal, by trust and luck. Owned by Sylvia Horabchak, trained by Fred Rawson, and ridden to victory by Chavi and Chow. Time for the six furlongs. One, 14 and four. Number three, Call Me Captain, was proudly bred right here in Manitoba by Sylvia and Gary Horabchak. Race one is official in the upcoming second race. There are no changes. Kicking off another pick three here in race number two. As I mentioned earlier, ladies and gentlemen, this is your ultimate chase the ace place, which does raise money for the final furlong organization that helps find good homes for retired racehorses. You can not only win the jackpot by picking the ace of diamonds, but you'll win $100 if you pick either Joker and are guaranteed $25 for every other card. Tickets are just buy $5 each and available in the lobby. And take note that final fur furlong coffee mugs are also available for a minimum $10 donation at guest services.
Welcome back down the paddock for race number two for this $5,000 climber. For Phillies and Mayors, three and up that are non two lifers. There you go, seven and a half furlongs. Quick look back at race number one. Stretch, call me captain. Well timed. Just got there. Just got there. Race went how we both thought. I, obviously, I took a chance on the one and kind of lost a, a bit of a bad beat at the wire, but that's racing. Um, yeah, good, good. Uh, and uh, lone speed, whatever kind of track it's going to be, you're going to get that. So we'll have to see. You can't really get anything from it other than why you figure out race shape. So the favorite had to chase down the lone speed and, and was the best in the race. So, um, yeah. So here we go. Race, All right. Race. On to race number two. Who do you like? Okay. So I'm taking, well, I'll, I'll take the four to one. I think that's another fair value. Uh, ran a nice race. You picked this horse last time, and uh, at, and I was surprised. I don't know if you were surprised that the horse got the lead. I didn't think the horse would go to the lead and, and shows that there was some sharpness to this horse or they're trying something a little bit different. It was a good by, ride by uh, Chavi and Chow. I think this horse is starting to figure it out a little bit. If you look back last year at Woodbine, different surface, had some better buyers. This time of year, horses get stuck in the non-twos. The maidens can win back-to-back, -back, and that's what I've decided, trying to figure out if the horse can go the, the two turns, the breeding says it can go the two turns. So why not uh, take a shot, stock the four, take over, and, and hold off the one and the two? Yeah, no doubt about it. I thought Victoriaville would go to the lead last time out. After all those Z patterns that it ran, pressing, falling back, coming back on. Then Chavi and Chow last time just said, okay, let's go to the front, see if we're best. And definitely the horse was. But it will get company if it goes to the front end in here. Number four, missing the point, also possesses really good early speed. Has been caught up with some real fast sprinters and battling them out. So four and five. I, I think the two of them are going to set it up for someone to close. And that's why I went to number one, Rathmeister. Rathmeister, I like this horse early on when the horse ran second in Sparatus and then came back as the favorite against Lady Nyla. But the one thing, the problem that this horse has is getting out of the starting gate. Has been good in two out of the last three, and has ran really well that last race. This horse could have beat Wits Magic if it was a different bob at the wire. But with the speed that should go out the four and five, I think Ralph Maestro come absolutely flying down the lane, lane and this horse does have some good back class. I agree with you. We talked about it, how it uh, looked live last time, and, and uh, going from there, dropped from the non-three, ran, ran the best race in that race, so certainly got to consider it, hence why it's my second pick. I'll go to the two as my third selection. Mucho Express, I'm, I'm hoping for a horse that sits a lot closer. You mentioned that there could be a, a pace battle. That would be between the four and the five. And if, if we do get an all-out battle, then this horse would be the one closing. Actually closed the most amount of ground in that uh, Wits Magic race. But when you're that far back, you're not going to make up that much ground. So I think the turn of foot isn't too bad for this horse. You, you just can't be 11, 14 lengths back uh, for this horse to, to be there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that isn't conducive to the racetrack in the last couple of weeks. And that's why the horse did only make a belated rally. I also like number three, Hazy Winter. I love that first race it ran after coming from Charlestown. Yes, it got beat by a ton, but it finished fast late down the race, in the race. But since then, never saw a lot until last time the horse was in a stalking roll, took the lead, and only lost by a length and was right there every step of the way. I think this is an improving horse. Ronald Alley got the most out of it, but we've got Neville Stevenson on today. I'm thinking Hazy Winter, 5-1. to one. I'd like to see 7 or 8-1 to one to be able to play this horse, but definitely looks live off that last race. Yeah, and that's a good point that you made. When you're looking for some price horses or, or you know that this horse is maybe not the best, you need that price. You need the value, and so that's what you have to really watch for. I completely agree with you. If I got eight, 7 to 8 to 1 on him, I'd have to consider him too. I will talk about the four. I've backed this horse last time because it was in such a big duel. Two back. Same thing happened again last time. Look, looked great again in the paddock. It's just a matter of can the horse get the distance. 
did go fast, did get in the duel, especially two back. Last race, I wasn't a big fan of, of how poorly the horse stopped. But we saw in the last race, the one got loose. And if the five lets the four go, you never know, might get brave. And so that would be a potential upsetter on a different race shape change if gets loose. Yeah, no doubt the non-two lifers, that's where you seem to find the biggest uh, prices for the upsets. Also, don't not to be left out, number six, Storm Kitten. Yeah, coming off some bad form in the last few outings, beating double digits, going a mile against King Wit, but that was against the boys. Then came back and was beaten double digits once again, where Misgiving easily went wire to wire. This is probably one of the easier races that she will get into, but with her being off form right now, that's why she's 17 to 1 on the board. Absolutely, yeah. Are you gonna, I, I'm going to need to see something before I back uh, this horse uh, maybe next time. Does come right back going from there. At least, uh, yeah, going to have to improve. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number two, Stretch. What do you got? Okay, we're going to just start with, again, a, a smaller bet here. Uh, bet I always like to do, especially kind of a wide open race like this, even though the one is the favorite. The $3 exacto box, one, two, and five. If you want to make it a one dollar, it's only six bucks. Still one, two, and five. All right, myself, I'm going after the pick three. I'm going to take all in this first leg. I could have threw out Storm Kitten like Stretch probably would have. But just in case, I want to have them all. And then I got two horses in the next leg. The one and eight rounded out with the six. That's only going to cost $12 in my math for a dollar, two for 24. So if you want to bet a buck, only 12. I'm betting a deuce, $24. Good luck with all your wagers here in race two. And we'll see you back for race three. Kicking off jackpot pick five wagering. are on the track for race number two they're gonna go seven and a half furlongs for ten thousand one hundred dollars number one is Ralph Meister owned by Steve Herman jr. and Marilyn DeLorme trained by Francis Nelson with Siobhan Bell number two is Mucho Express owned by Pink Cloud Racing trained by Courtney Ross with Antonio Whitehall Number three is Hazy Winter, owned by Bear Stream Stables, trained by Lee Delaron with Neville Stevenson. Number four is Missing the Point, owned by Clifford Cavanaugh, trained by Perry Cavanaugh with Sheldon Chickadess. Number five is Victoriaville, owned by Blair Kidd and Boss Baby Racing, trained by Blair Kidd with Chavi and Chow. Rounding out the field is number six, Storm Kitten, owned by Hetty Kling and Maria Stanford, trained by Maria Stanford with Arthur Badu. Post time for race number two in four minutes.
And ladies and gentlemen, as this is race number two, we have our HBPA Manitoba best turned out horse. And that's number six, Storm Kitten. Number six, Storm Kitten, the HBPA Manitoba best turned out horse here in race number two. Two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the girls going seven and a half furlongs. They're going to go past the wire twice. The second one is the important one. So I'm going to go to the five horse sitting at two to one. Won the maiden race last time. Looked good doing it. Seemed to start waking up. Has a bit of back class racing in Woodbine. Might get that stocking trip and take over before the, the closers come. That's the closers is the one horse. Does like to finish second a lot. And then the deeper closer is the two. If the entire pace backs up, don't forget the two. Long shot could steal it is the four, but I'll still go five, one, two. Yeah, Stretch, I do like number one, Rathmeister. I've liked this horse a few times, but had trouble getting out of the starting gate. Had no trouble last time out or three outs ago. And this horse ran absolutely huge. The even money, that's a little bit short, but coming off that race, I think it's the one to beat. I do like the five, Victoriaville, if it gets loose on the front end, but kind of untested around two turns. And number three, Hazy Winter, Looking for a long shot, six to one. Only ran a length behind the even money one horse. Good luck here in race two.
Rathmeister first into the starting gate. The six to five favorite. Next up, Mucho Express. Hazy Winter goes in. Now missing the points turn. Just two left to load. Victoriaville. And now just waiting on Storm Kitten to the outside. They're all set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the outside, Victoriaville straight out to grab the early lead as they pass the grandstand for the first time. Storm Kitten, a length back in second, missing the point. He's going to come off of it today in third. Then settled, settled back in fourth, Hazy Winter with Rathmeister to the outside. And the early trailer, Mucho Express, six off the early lead. The opening quarter, a rather sluggish 25 and 4. And it's Victoriaville with that lead still by a length, missing the point now in second. Fading back to third, Storm Kitten. Moving up in between horses, Hazy Winter with Rathmeister to the outside. And Mucho Express still the trailer. The half sped up 50 and 4. And it's still Victoriaville. Living life large on the front end by four lengths. Moving at them from the back. That's Hazy Winter and Rathmeister. Running as a pair. Back in fourth. Mucho Express has some late run. They hit the head of the lane. Victoriaville still with the lead by three. On the far outside, Rathmeister on the inside, Mucho Express is going to try and challenge with a 16th of a mile to go. Mucho Express, wow, just flies on by and is going to get the win. Victoriaville second best, very close for third between Rothmeister and Hazy Winter. The Stewart's supposed to number two, Mucho Express, as your race winner. Second goes to number five, Victoriaville. A photograph has been called to determine the show position. They went the opening quarter 25 and four, the half 50 and four. Six furlongs, 118 and one. Time for the seven and a half furlongs, 139 and three. Results of the photo show number one, Rathmeister finishing third. Fourth goes to number three, Hazy Winter. Now entering the winner's enclosure. The unofficial winner here in race two, that's number two, Mucho Express. Mucho Express is a chestnut filly, three years old, by Mucho Macho Man, out of the Mare Arage by Donnerell Court. Owned by Pink Cloud Racing, trained by Courtney Ross, and ridden an unofficial victory by Antonio Whitehall. Time for the seven and a half furlongs, one, 39 and three.
Race two is official in the upcoming third race. Kicking off jackpot pit five wagering. There are no changes. And we'll carry on with the rest of the changes in this evening's pick five. And there isn't any in race four, five, six, or seven. Jackpot pick five wagering that carryover just under $300,000 here in race number three. Are you new to Assiniboine Hounds? Well, check out the 140 VLTs located on the second level. They're open all day, every day from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the first leg of the 20 cent wager called the Jackpot Pick 5 coming up here in race three. If your ticket is the only correct one, picking the winners of races three to seven, you're going to win the whole jackpot, which will be over $300,000. And when there is more than one winner, a consolation will be paid out, and the jackpot keeps growing.
And welcome back down to Paddock 4, race number 3. Kicking off jackpot, pick 5, wagering with an allowance race. Four two-year-old Philly maidens. They're going to go five furlongs. Quick look back at race number 2 stretch. Mucho Express took advantage of the inside and uh, came a-running inside the 16th pole. It did. I thought there was two very good rides in there. The, the five horse got the lead, shut it down, and, and then tried to open it up. You said oh, the, in your race call is up, starting to make them run, which I like when they do that. And then the, the two, if the two doesn't get that rail trip, doesn't get up, and so that was a good ride and sat closer. So a good ride on Antonio of just being within the pack and basically closed about the same amount of ground as it did last time, but being when you're five or six lengths closer, you can make up that ground. Well, without a doubt, great ride in there. Okay, on to race number three, the baby stretch. Wow, a couple big favorites here. couple big favorites. We'll start, uh, we've got Jake on camera, so he's got the eight for me over there. Um, it, it is a full field of two-year-olds, so th th I like seeing when there's eight of them in here. Um, exciting futures for all of them. We'll go to Russian Pearl. Three straight seconds against three undefeated horses. And, and Lady Cop ended up winning a third straight after that race, too. So you know how the competition that, uh, that Russian Pearl's raced against. You mentioned on ASD Live how basically the eight had to chase. I, I, lo I love my life because of the scr there's another scratch, Lady Cop, I believe. Yeah. And became the lone speed. So... I thought that was the case the last two races. So when you're a bit of a closer and you don't have as much speed, you're kind of up against it. So we'll see. There's probably going to be some horses showing a bit more speed, and then uh, Dwight Lewis can sit just off and make a move, or if it's just much the best can go. Um, sits right there. Uh, four to five is about what I thought. Anything to add on the eight? Well, I don't mind post position number eight going five furlongs. Because with all the babies, things happen in there. So things can open, only happen on the inside of you. So that's what I like about Russian Pearl. It's not going to get trapped or anything. And uh, this horse is just running so good. This is definitely the horse to beat. I also like number one, Silver Creek Lady. Taking a pile of early money. Currently sitting at seven of five. The dad, Uncle Mo, Breeders' Cup juvenile winner. Had five wins and eight starts. 1.6 million. The mom, Dixie Two Stepper, she was a three time winner of 157,000. And in her first two lifetime starts, she went five furlongs, made an allowance at Woodbine, and ran second in both of those, showing speed. This one has nine siblings, but the full sibling is a horse by the name of Moana, who broke the maiden allowance going a mile and a 16th at Keeneland, and yeah, a lot of half-siblings, but it's the ones that are fully related are the ones you really want to keep track of. And with this one winning at Keeneland for maiden allowance, has decent workouts coming in, not really killing it in the morning, but well-bred, mom's a speedster, dad a Breeders' Cup winner. That says this thing is a runner to me. Yeah, and uh, you gave some great stats and I, 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 some real good stats on ASD Live. You mentioned pretty much all of them there, too. Really good. The two-back work is, is the one that uh, I kind of caught my eye from the gate. I like the, the workouts from the gate, uh, much more important for me. It is on the post one, kind of the opposite of, of when yeah. you in the eight. So horses... And jockey Jorge Crano has won 52 races. How many on two-year-olds? I'm going to go with one. None. There you go. Only had two starts. Well, oh, look at that. They're good for you on the trick. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, let's go to the seven horses is, is my second selection, but I've already made note of the one for sure. That's just uh, a first time with that much action and back breeding. And just like you said, Carino doesn't ride too many two-year-olds, so uh, maybe take note. Uh, big, big energy. Um, a couple even efforts. I do like the even efforts. That's the key for me. Uh, the other ones have kind of backed up a bit. I, I, I did lose to the uh, the two horse. I watched the race, and, and yes, the two might be a little bit better. I just thought the races are spaced out a little bit. For me, it's the eight, and then all the others. I'm kind of searching. 11 to 1 is the price it's expected for sure. Yeah, another one I like is number two, Anna Gozana. Dwight Lewis obviously went to the eight Russian Pearl. Ronaldo Cumberbatch picks this one up, but Ronaldo Cumberbatch, he's won four. 
of the two-year-old races. The other big one is Chavi and Chow, who's won three. He's on the four going gorgeous. But Anna Kazana, I like that first start. Just got a little tired late down the lane. Then went against the undefeated Lady Cop. And at the time, adjournment was also one for one. Did lose to Arrogance by four and a half. But the horse probably just got a little tired down the lane. I just like that it has a little bit of a middle move to work with. And you get a jockey who's won the most two-year-old races. For sure. You, and uh, you've made a lot of picks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a shot on this four horse at 35 to 1, which is a complete overlay. The horses had only had one start. So, as you can see, it's a, it's a big filly. Um, didn't show very much, but went off at 275 on the dollar. Then as a maintenance work, obviously there was some interest early. So i got to give the horse at least another shot. That's where you get the long shots because everybody kind of gives up. Um, and, and we know how much you can, a horse can improve. Yeah, I've done the, this year it's been as many as five, six points after their first start. Yeah, another horse to look at. The other first time starter, number six, Bad Pixie. The dad, Nonios, a winner from six to a mile on a 16th. Almost a half a million dollars in earnings. And the same sire as the eight Russian Pearl. The mom, Bad Cat, was a winner of one race made $10,000 and did win at the bottoms, restricted, maiden 5,000. And this is the first full for Bad Pixie. Does have a nice work on August the 12th, 49 and one out of the gate. The other ones, a little bit slow for my liking. I'm gonna have to watch one, not taking a lot of action, 45 to one. Yeah, and, and that's that's things you kind of have to watch, but sometimes they're, they're morning glories and some they don't wake up. Uh until the afternoon and and that that's when we, they become a racehorse for sure all right stretch let's go to our wagers here in race number three pick five time what do you got i just have a smaller ticket here i'm, I'm going to take a shot here on the eight uh, look at you planning ahead i like that eight with the four six and then i'm gonna hit the all button in the fifth two five six seven in the sixth and then one three five coming home in the eight the seventh race only twenty eight eighty and myself, I'm taking both the one and eight in here, then the two, four, six, then just the three, six, two, five, six, and eight in race six, and race seven, three, four, five, and six. My ticket, 3840. Good luck with all your wagers here in race three, and we'll see you back for race four, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. are on the track for race number three they're gonna go five furlongs for twenty thousand dollars number one is silver creek lady owned by gary herniak damon gillis rihanna gray and dave ledoux trained by michael nalt with jorge carreño number two is anna cozana Owned by Larry Falloon, Anderson Livestock Stable, and Shelly Brown. Trained by Shelly Brown with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Number three is Everything to Gain. Owned by Windancer Stable. Trained by Wendy Anderson with Neville Stevenson. Number four is Going Gorgeous. Owned by Arneson Farms. Trained by Lee Pruitt with Chavi and Chow. Number five is Diane's Wish, owned by Stella Racing and Larry Falloon, trained by Stephen Gaskin with Stanley Shady Jr. Number six is Bad Pixie, owned by Dr. Betty Hughes, trained by Elton Dickey with Lorena Bougeau. Number seven is Big Big Energy, 
owned and trained by Devin Giddens with Craven Badry. Rounding out the field is number eight, Russian Pearl. Owned by Larry Falloon and Ron Wiley, trained by Devin Giddens with Dwight Lewis. Post time for race number three, kicking off jackpot pick five, wagering they head to post in four minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the girls going five furlongs in a maiden special weight. Yes, horses that have not won. Lots of future in this with many of these uh, young two-year-olds going. I'll start with the eight as the expected favorite. Has run three very good races already in her career. Has lost to some horses that have even a brighter future. There may not be any of them in here. If this horse runs back to that race, will be tough to beat. Others to consider. The seven, that horse runs evenly. You want a long shot that might wake up. That's the four at 30 to one. Only one start may wake up and become a racehorse. 25 to 1, 874. Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you on number eight. Russian Pearl has yet to run a bad race and always competitive and always getting better. Draws the outside, which is a good post position. I also like number one, Silver Creek Lady, the first time starter, taking a pile of money. Right now at eight to five, the dad, a Breeders' Cup winner, the mom, a speedster. So I like those two, and I like number two, Anna Cozana, with the winningest rider on two-year-olds, two Ronaldo Cumberbatch. I'm gonna give you eight, one, and two. Good luck here in race three.
time. Silver Creek Lady, the first two-year-old filly, is in the starting gate. Anna Kozana now steps up. Everything to gain walks up and in. Go in gorgeous is next. Diane's Wish ready to go in. Bad Pixie's turn. Just two left to load. Big, big energy. And just waiting on the three to five favorite, Russian Pearl to the outside. They're at the post. And they're off. Stumbling a bit at the start was Silver Creek Lady. From the outside, big, big energy. Showing some good speed with Russian Pearl to the outside. In between horses, Diane's Wish. Silver Creek Lady on the inside goes up to engage them. Coming off the pace, Bad Pixie and your two early trailers going gorgeous and everything to gain. The opening quarter, 23 seconds, and it's Russian Pearl who has opened up a three-length advantage on Diane's Wish in second. Silver Creek Lady back to third on the outside in fourth. Bad Pixie and Big Big Energy, Anna Kozana looking for room, but Russian Pearl has taken off on him, and with a 16th of a mile to go, this is all Russian Pearl who's going to win by three. Diane's Wish second best. Third's going to go to Bad Pixie. Fourth, Silver Creek Lady. The stewards are posted number eight, Russian Pearl. As your race winner, second goes to number five, Diane's Wish. A photograph has been called.
to determine the show position. They went the opening quarter, 23 seconds, the half 47 and one. Time for the five furlongs, one minute and three fifths. Results of the photo show number six, Bad Pixie. Finishing third, fourth, goes to number one, Silver Creek Lady. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number three, that's number eight, Russian Pearl. Russian Pearl is a dark bear brown filly, two years old, by Nonios, out of the mare Russian Jewel, by Wildcat Air. Owned by Larry Falloon and Ron Wiley, trained by Devin Gittens, and ridden to victory by Dwight Lewis. Time for the five furlongs, one minute and three fifths. Number eight, Russian Pearl, was proudly bred right here in Manitoba by Larry Falloon and Dennis Huberto. Race three is official in the upcoming fourth race, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering, the Hustler Gray Horse Appreciation Race. There are no changes. And once again, there's no changes in races five, six, or seven. $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering kicks off with the Hustler Gray Horse appreciation race that goes to post in 16 minutes. Well, if you want to keep up with all the local horse racing news and events that Assiniboine announced, then be sure to subscribe to our weekly newsletter, The Inside Track. You can subscribe at asdowns.com. And just five minutes now to get your tickets at guest services in the lobby for Chase the Ace. The jackpot more than $5,600. And remember, you're guaranteed at least $25 if your ticket is drawn. Hurry and purchase your tickets now.
And welcome back down the paddock for race number four, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering with a $2,500 claimer for three year olds and up that are non two of the year or non four lifers, and they're only going to go five furlongs. Quick look back at race number three, Russian Pearl getting the job done. Yeah, no, no surprise there. Didn't have any of the uh, Lady Copper, I love my life in there. Uh, good ride by Dwight Lewis, just kind of was the Cadillac was wide and then made that middle move, which which she did in both races, always made a nice move. But, but unfortunately, I, the speed kept carrying. Correct, and the competition was a little tougher there. Um, you made a great note about the breeding on the, the top three finishers. All Nonios sired. Yeah, and, and so... That's a crazy one in this field. And Manitoba breads have really been taking it to everybody else in the two-year-old cat- category. We got a lot of nice babies here in Manitoba this year. And Russian Pearl, this looks like a horse that can run all day. And going into next year, wow, this horse is going to be tough as nails. All right, on to race number four, Stretch. Who do you like? Okay, let's, uh, let's start with the, the six horse. We've got, it is only going five furlong, which is, a, is the big key to this race. It's speed and more speed. But I feel I found a horse in here that ha- can sit just off the pace or stock. And that's what that last race really showed me. I thought Ronald Alley gave the horse a, a great ride. The horse just got pulled to the lead, made a wide move, and then just got beat late to uh, Dan's a Rebel, who I feel is a, a, a higher claimer, a 35, maybe even a 5,000 for sure in there. The figures are there. Repeat of that race and the repeat, same ride, I think this horse is going to be tough to beat. Yeah, no doubt about it. I also like it in here. I'm going to talk about another one, number five, Hot Rod, and hasn't been able to come back to his former self. He used to rock and roll on the front end. Catch me if you can. This horse did win two races last year. Has been shut out so far this year, but it's not an easy race for Hot Rod because of all the speed that's in here. That's true. Uh, He hasn't got the lead. Last year, you'd see you always would get the lead. Maybe they're going to try a different running style and just sit off. Now, last time hopped at the break, so lost all chance. Yeah, there. I don't think they're going to start that after 57 <laughs> lifetime and starts. He's, and he's a nine-year-old. Does win, has won 20 races, so that, that's pretty big. Um, okay, let's go. Well, why don't you talk about the four, our second selection? Well, Brightologist, this horse was a big-time winner three outs ago, blazing wire-to-wire, winning easily by five. Then in the two-furlong race, had to come off the pace. As the horse had a slow start, which you do not want going to furlongs, then came back in an on two of the year, battled it out and ended up tiring. But I think the five furlongs is everything for this horse. Has started at the distance four times and has three wins to show for it. That's why I also like with you six and four. For sure. And then both of our third selection is is the two, uh, another Mountaineer. Now the advantage for this one over the four is it, it's had a race over the track. Um, I did like this horse to be in the mix last time, and I wasn't disappointed because we both like Dan's a Rebel, but I like when horses come out of the two furlong race, sharpens them up, kind of the same angle as, as the four did, and then ran, showed speed. I think if, if this horse, I don't know, is, is the most speed, but you never know. Some of these at five furlongs, a jockey takes note that there's so much speed and they can sit back and kind of try to make a move. I don't think it's a throw out. I think that five to one, you know, could be an upset. They are for running for 2,500. Yeah, I think the one with the most speed is number one, astonishing tweet. This horse broke like a rocket out of the gate, had an easy lead by a length and a half, hitting the head of the lane though. Mr. Benz had dead aim and blew on by. I think this horse is a specialist going four furlongs. As you see, that's all it ran at Fawner all the time. And so I think the five furlongs is maybe the limits of astonishing tweet, but there is so much more speed in the race today than last time out. It's going to be hard to throw it in. Yeah, that's just it. Uh, You called it about the distance. Uh, When I see horses always run for four furlongs, I always kind of get concerned. Let's talk about the three quickly. Um, That replay, you have to watch the replay. It was an interesting race. The horse was close, dropped back, and tried to come again. And now gets claimed, so uh, that's always something to consider. This horse can come off the pace. You have three back at Mountaineer. The horse did come off the pace. 
that would be the winning race of how this horse potentially could win just coming off the pace. No doubt about it. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number four. Pick four times stretch. What do you got? Okay, so I'm going to uh, take a couple horses in here. I'll take two, four, six. I'll uh, throw in the all button in the fifth, and then two, five, six, seven. And then I've got a key somewhere because it gets a little pricey. Just key the five in the last. I get your key, and I'm starting in this race. Yeah. I'm keying the six horse wake up call. Then I'm taking three, four, and six in race five. Race six, the two, five, six, and eight, and rounding it out with three, four, five, and six in race seven. That'll cost $48. Good luck with all your wagers here in race four, and we'll see you back for race five. On the track for race number four, the Hustler Gray Horse Appreciation Race. They're going to go five furlongs for $10,200. Number one is Astonishing Tweet. Owned by Bear Stream Stable, trained by Lee Deleron with Neville Stevenson. Number two is Laughing Latinos. Owned by Cruz Benz Miller, trained by Tom Gardepe Jr. with Leroy Nelson. Number three is Towards the Light, owned and trained by Devin Gittens with Siobhan Bell. Number four is Brightologist, owned and trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Carreño. The five is Hot Run, owned and trained by Maria Stanford with Arthur Badu. Running out the field is number six, Wake Up Call, who is getting an equipment adjustment Owned by Cruz Benzmiller, trained by Tom Gardepe Jr. with Ronald Alley. The Hustler Gray Horse Appreciation Race. Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. They go to post in three minutes.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. go get the boys going only five furlongs always speed at these races and there is a lot of it i'm gonna go to the outside horse i think uh, if we can run a similar race just sit just off the pace make that move is gonna be wide but when you're only going five furlongs usually the horse can kind of carry the speed i'm hoping that's what ronald alley the jockey can do others to consider there's an invader uh coming from mountaineer that's the four horse has the figures could be there might be the speed of the speed the other one that's already had a start is the two. So let's go six, four, and two. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I also like the six horse wake up call. Had a wake up race last time out after dropping into the 2500s from the optional $10,000 level. Ran absolutely huge, a duplicate race. I think it's a winning one now that it's only going five furlongs. I do like the four Bridologists. Some good races, three wins out of four starts going five furlongs. And Laughing Latinos, great race last time out. I got those three, six, four, and two. Good luck here in race four.
time. Astonishing tweet, the first one in the gate. Laughing Latinos is in. Next up towards the light. Brightologist set to go in. Just two left to load. Hot run. And just waiting on the even money favorite to the outside, wake up call. They're all set, they're at the post. And they're off. Hopping a bit at the start was Hot Rodden. From the inside, astonishing tweet. Quickly goes out to capture the early lead. By a length and a half, Laughing Latinos in second on the inside. Moving up, Brightologists in third, wake up call. Couple lengths off it in fourth, another two back to Towards the Light and the early trailer, Hot Rodden. A heated opening quarter in 22 and two, and it's astonishing tweet with on the outside, Brightologist. Trying to reel them in, wake up, call three wide. Coming up the rail, laughing Latinos. They hit the head of the lane. Brightologists with a nose advantage. Trying to get through, laughing Latinos. On the far outside, wake up, call. But it's Brightologists on the inside, laughing Latinos. Laughing Latinos gets up and gets the win. Second's going to go to Brightologists. A late closing towards the light. Finish in third. The Stewart's supposed to number two laughing Latinos. As your race winner, a photograph has been called to determine the place and show positions. They went the opening quarter 22 and 2, the half 46 and 2. Time for the five furlongs, one minute and one fifth. Results of the photo show number four, Brightologist. Finish in second. Third goes to number three, Towards the Light. And fourth to number six, Wake Up Call.
Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner of the Hustler Gray Horse Appreciation Race, the winner number two, Laughing Latinos. Laughing Latinos is a bay gelding, five years old, by awesome bet, out of the mare, Veil of Tears, by Distorted Humor. Owned by Cruz Benzmiller, trained by Tom Gardipe Jr., and ridden to victory by Leroy Nelson. Time for the five furlongs, one minute and one fifth. Race four is official in the upcoming fifth race. The Golf Mentor Group going for the green race. There are no changes. Kicking off a late pick three here in race number five. And be sure to check out our new player portal at asdowns.com. All the information you need on ASD Live Racing in one convenient place. Watch live racing access, free online ASD programs, expert selections, and more. Scan the QR code on the player portal ad in your program to go there now.
welcome back down the paddock for race number five. We have a $7,500 claimer. Four, three rolls and up. They're going to go six furlongs. Quick look back at race number four, Strength. Wow, laughing Latinos stayed on the rail every step of the way and fended off the late challenge. Yeah, and we, we talked about that, which jockey would decide that, you know, can't get the lead and kind of sit back, and that's exactly what uh, Leroy did. And like you said, a good ride on the rail and, and then came up. We, you called how fast the one is. and uh, yeah, That thing's a rocket. A rocket. So. I'd like to see that back at Fawner going those four furlong races. That horse will definitely take some of my money in the winter if it does go there. For sure. And it, to me, it looked like that the, the four horse kind of moved, went after the speed, but also first race over the track. I think that horse will be sharper next time. Totally agree. On to race number five, Stretch. Who do you like? Okay. So... Let's keep moving on, and just for interest sake, thanks for betting the 80, over 85000 We're already down to only uh, 7100 which part of that money is mine in there, just uh, for those wondering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not, not of mine. Mine's donated to those people. And, and we all thank you. Here we go. Let's go to the six. We have the same three horses. And uh, Marky Well, for multiple reasons here, he is a racehorse. Yes, he is nine years old, but... He's making a, a small drop, a, well, let's not say small, a pretty big drop uh, just on, on the competition alone. It's been a huge drop all year yeah. from the first level of 75 and 75 to 5. And, and so he does belong at that level. He's just not running like he did last year. And so what's really good about him is he likes to come off the pace. He makes his nice wide move. You see it all the time last year. It just says tracked wide, outside determined. Advanced wide and on and on. So Carino's got him on the outside. We've got early pace with, with for sure the two and the four for sure are going out. And so throw in the one, three, and five. That won't be too far away. There either. you go. So Mark will be at the back. Mark will not be on the front end. And so Mark will circle and, and hopefully get up. I, I'd like to see a little higher price, but uh, because it is still a competitive field. It's, this is no slam dunk winner. Yeah, no doubt about it. I just like that there's so much speed that even the ones, I Big Tony and Eagle Bind for sure going out, but Singing Crying Dubai, never too far away in the deep challenge last time out. And Yola has been running on the front end. The only win, the horse stumbled was pulled back to last, circled around, and then got it done in there. So that's why I like Mark Ewell a lot in this race. Singing Crying Dubai, our second selection. This horse has been running lights out since it arrived at the Downs. First time out, that was kind of interesting trip, sitting third and staying there, where Dazzling Mischief went wire to wire, then ran down All for Truth, who was loose speed, came back to win. Had a little bit of a trouble trip two outs ago, but then last time ran great again, only to get caught by Spire in the final strides. This one doesn't have to be on the front end, but is a good stalker in here and fits well. Yeah, I, I like that last race. I agree completely with you. The wake up horse last race that we both triggered on a little bit uh, to kind of be third is the one I thought was in the deep. Um, if you look at last year, how good this horse ran, um, higher level. Last time showed speed on the rail, moved early, and then kind of uh, got tired late. But I like these type of horses because this is going to be the four start um, at, a, at the track and, and just kind of rounding into form. You see these type of horses that are trying to kind of get back on form, and that's what I saw last time. So I think there's this uh, as an upset with the top two at 5-1. to one, I think uh, In the Deep is one of them. Yeah, and I really like that race first out against Wicked Fortitude and Majestic Street. That kind of a race would be a winning race. Also take a look at number four, Eagle Vine. This horse made the lead easy last time out, but couldn't fend him off. Is making the third start of the life, but it's going six furlongs. I'd like to see this horse going five or five and a half. Six, I think, is a little bit too far when there's a lot of other speed as there is today. But Eagle Bind, if he does show his best effort, 20 to 1, massive bargain. A, a completely. Remember, this horse was off a year. So, uh, again, one of these fresher horses and, and does win races as, as well as seven of nine, uh, 9 of 20 in the money at ASD after a couple races. So, solid there. I think we go to our bets. All right, let's go to our bets here in race number five, Stretch. 
Oh. Um, okay. So, okay, so somebody's this. been reading my notes. You know what, Beth? Let's go stretch change alert. I do, I do not want to be like Kurt. Definitely what a winner. not. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to pull a bit of a Kurt bet, though. Still, okay. Still don't like to be like Kurt. $5 tri wheel, six with one, three, five with one, three, five. Still $30. Let's get the try. Exactly, Beth. Wow, that's fast. Good. Good job, Beth. I'm going 30 to win on six. You don't have to change anything. Hopefully, I can lock it in at two to one. Good luck for all your wagers here in race five, and we'll see you back for race six. First on the track for race number five, the Golf Mentor Group going for the green race. They're going to go six furlongs for $14,800. Number one is In the Deep, owned by Jerry Gowdy and Rick Wise, trained by Rick Wise with Chavi and Chow. Number two is Big Tony, owned by Darcy Peterson, trained by Shelly Brown with Antonio Whitehall. Number three is Sing and Cry in Dubai, owned and trained by Jared Brown with Tyrone Nelson. Number four is Eagle Vine, owned by MDM Stable, trained by Ryan DeJarlis with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Number five is Yola, owned by Bill Meikle and Windancer Stable, trained by Wendy Anderson with Neville Stevenson. Rounding out the field is number six, Marky Well. Owned by Jared Brown and Lucky Eight Stable. Trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Carreño. Post time for race number five in three minutes. now two minutes to post time at ASD. Boys going six furlongs in a, a higher level claiming race. 
Landed on the six as my top selection. Marky Well, this is a, a solid horse last year that had won five races. Will sit just off the pace. There is other pace to run at. Should circle wide, watch for him outside. Uh, to use that, another one that ran too, a race too good to lose last time, and that's the three. Stocked the pace, was closer, took over, and then got tired late. Similar race makes him tough to beat. Might get the jump on his entry bait, and don't forget the one at seven to one. Great value. He's a runner as well. Six, three, and one. Kurt. Yeah, stretch. I'm going with the six and three because there's so much speed in here. Everybody possesses it except for the six horse. And that's why I took him on top. I think he's going to rally late to get the win. The three singing crying Dubai is the stalker in the field. And deservedly so, the favorite at seven to five. But number five, Yola. If he can run that race from two outs ago, that's the biggest bargain on the board at 701. I'm going to give you six and three. Good luck here in race five. And ladies and gentlemen, in this evening's Ultimate Chase the Ace, we've drawn our winning ticket to three nine zero once again the winning ticket in tonight's ultimate chase the ace two three nine zero you'll have five minutes to report to get services on the main floor south end but don't throw your tickets away if winning ticket two three nine zero does not show up in five minutes there will be a redraw In the deep, the first one to walk into the starting gate. Next up, Big Tony walks right in. Singing, crying to buy is in. It's now Eagle Vine's turn. Just two left to load. Yola. And just waiting on the 8-5 favorite, Marky Well. And they'll all be set. They're at the post. And they're off. 
Quickly from the middle, Eagle Mind shows some speed and is matched on the inside by Big Tony. Settled back in third, that's in the deep with singing, crying to buy in between horses. Yola is going to be three wide and mark ye well the early trailer. The opening quarter, 23 seconds and Big Tony well restrained by Antonio Whitehall has the lead by a length. Moving up in between horses, Eagle Bind, a three-wide bid coming from Yola. In between horses, singing, crying, Dubai. Then it's back to In the Deep. And Mark e. Well starting a roll from the back. The half, 46 and 1. Big Tony looked in the eye by Yola. As they hit the head of the lane, Big Tony digging in, Yola to the outside, on the far outside, Mark e. Well in the deep, trying to split horses late, but it's still Big Tony in the deep, gets through, and cruises, is going to win by two, in the deep, in the win, second to Big Tony, and third to Mark e. Well. Stewart supposed to number one in the deep as your race winner. Second goes to number two, Big Tony. Third to number six, Marky Well. And fourth to number five, Yola. They went the opening quarter, 23 seconds. The half, 46 and one. Time for the six furlongs, 1 12 and two. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner of the Golf Mentor Group going for the green race. That's number one, In the Deep. In the Deep is a big gelding, five years old, by Pioneer of the Nile, out of the Mare Miss Ocean City, by Mineshaft. Owned by Jerry Gowdy and Rick Wise, trained by Rick Wise, and ridden to victory by Chavi and Chow. Time for the six furlongs. 112 and 2. Congratulations goes out to jockey Chavi and Chow, who scores the double. Two wins for jockey Chavi and Chow. Race 5 is official in the upcoming six race. There are no changes. Post time for race number 6, 17 minutes away.
Fill our Club West Gaming Lounge featuring 140 VLTs is open daily from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Be sure to enter our Spin to Win game every Thursday and Friday for a chance to spin the wheel for up to $100. And in this evening's Winnipeg Ultimate Chase, the ace Donna B went to the board and she selected the King of Hearts. So she got herself $25 and the jackpot keeps growing over $5,700 in Winnipeg's Ultimate Chase, the ace.
and welcome back down the paddock for race number six. We have a $5,000 claimer for Phillies and Mares, three and up. That our maidens are gonna go five and a half furlongs. Quick look back at race number five in the deep stocks on what looks like a golden rail evening. I agree with you for sure. The, the last two winners have come up the rail. Uh, the third race, the, the long shot, the five chased along the rail the entire time. Seems anybody making a move on the outside, spinning their wheels a little bit. Uh, the six, six did make a move, but wasn't closing as much as the one along the rail. And uh, that's what it looked uh, for me. Uh, from well, the, yeah, even with Big Tony hanging around uh, yeah. for a big second place finish. All right, on to race number six, Stretch. Who do you like? Okay, I, I've gone to the, the six as, as my top selection, the Invader from uh, Century Mile. Uh, racing for 20000 and that is not the bottoms there. And so that's the key. Always understand what the bottom level claimers are at every track, and that is not. The horse hasn't shown huge moves, but I like that it made a move last time and then flattened a little bit, couldn't really gain. But it's only two races this year. Now we're at the third, third, ra third race. Makes a drop in class. I think that the, some of the speed may not be able to carry the whole distance. And if that's the case, that could be the, the horse that kind of maybe makes a move and just kind of runs evenly. I think to win this race, it's kind of a, just an evenly type race is what you're looking for. Yeah, I agree with you there. There is some other speed in here with the two Wits Queso and the five Sassy Stormin. I expect them to go do some early battling. So maybe if Tyrone can find the rail in behind him, big shot to win. I'm going to take a shot on number eight, always the little one, the first-time starter. The dad had two wins, made over 500 k did win the Sunland Park Derby, going a mile and an eighth, and the mom on bridal meeting was a sprinter. Two wins, 88 k in earnings, all done in California. The horse has eight siblings. But uh, the one that's most accomplished is the full sibling, Dried Pepper. That horse had five wins, over 100K in earnings, and one from six furlongs to a mile. And I really like that flashy workout on August the 1st, 36 and 4 breezing. I'm thinking this one's a little bit of a runner. Yeah, yeah, that, you made such a good point on, on the same, same uh, lines and not just having a bit. So. We'll see. I, I get worried that the horses come in this late to the meet. Uh, I'll talk about that tomorrow uh, in the intro about that. Uh, it's not, there are no world beaters in here. I'm going to mention the invader from uh, Terra Park. That's the seven horse. Sorry to trick you a little bit there, Jake. Um, this horse, if you look three back, raced against Ruby and the Stars. Ruby and the Stars ended up winning as a maiden and been close on a couple other races. I think this horse is very comparable. Yes, usually running a mile. But again, the horses, these horses are not finishing as well. So this horse is an even type, does close a little bit. I really like three back, and even that last race wasn't too bad. I've got the figure saying that this horse is competitive. Yes, needs a, uh, been off a couple months, but has at least a workout here. That's a bit of a price at 9-1 to one for me. Yeah, no doubt about it. Another horse to look at, number five, Sassy Stormin. Dropping from maiden allowance. They added blinkers on last time out. Kind of sharpened the speed a little. The horse battled it out and ended up dropping back to be beaten by double digits in the end. Second place finisher came back to win rather easily. A lot to like. And this horse did run a really good race first time out. Yes, it got beat by 11, but was beaten by two good ones in favorite and White Rose Spirit. Sassy Storm will really like this class drop. Absolutely. It's one of the stronger plays that you, I like to use, and as you do too, uh, special weight down to the five. And there's a, obviously a lot, lot of talent in those special weights and showing speed, so the key was getting the lead, to, act, to actually get the lead. We'll mention the, the two horse. Uh, I did like this horse last time. Went off at 35 cents on the dollar. I never like to back a horse after they lose at 35 cents on the dollar, but we did see Victoriaville run a nice race earlier on and, and just lost. So that does help. That horse was in special weight, uh, two back, and, and wasn't, uh, wasn't that far off, kind of same figures as the, the five. But, uh, yeah, wide open race. Yeah, another one to throw in, number three, Zebo has been knocking on the door for the 5,000. The last two starts, 
Yeah, was beaten by Wits Queso only by a length and a quarter and lost to Victoriaville by four lengths in the previous start. This is one I'd say to throw in. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number six. Stretch, what do you got? Okay, we're going to go uh, a $3 exacto box with the five, six, and seven. We've got uh, two invaders in, and the, the dropping speed in there. 18 bucks or a dollar exacto box would be six. All right, I'm going to try and cash a ticket here before I go absolutely broke. <laughs> I'm going to go a $1 tractor wheel. I'm taking the first stir on top, the eight, with the two, three, five, six, seven. With the two, three, five, six, seven, a one dollar tractor, twenty dollars. Good luck with all your wagers here in race six, and we'll see you back for race seven. on the track for race number six they're gonna go five and a half furlongs for ten thousand dollars number one is spears t owned and trained by alan brown with antonio whitehall number two is wits queso owned by henry witt jr trained by jerry gorno with praven badry number three is zebo Owned and trained by Bill Mooney with Lorena Bougeau. Number four is Halo's Phenomenon. Owned by RTM Racing, trained by Ryan DeJarlis with Dwight Lewis. Number five is Sassy Storman. Owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Blair Miller with Jorge Carreño. Number six is Dragon Wing. Owned by Gerald Babchishin, trained by Murray Duncan with Tyrone Nelson. Number seven is Betting on Bell. Owned by Andy Stronick, trained by Jennifer Jordan with Siobhan Bell. Running out the field is number eight, Always the Little One. Owned by Arneson Farms, trained by Lise Pruitt with Chavi and Chow. Post time for race number six in three minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the 
girls going five and a half furlongs. It's for the maidens, horses that haven't won a race. The, I'll start on the six, the Invader from Century Mile. Has run evenly in both starts this year at a higher level. I think a similar race and the drop is going to make the difference. I think three to one is the fair value. It makes sense that the public is on the five, dropping from much tougher field, showing speed. It is a good betting angle, shortening up. If can get the lead and keep going, would be tough to beat. The long shot is my invader from Viterra Park down south. Could be closing late at 12 to 1. Don't leave that one out. 6, 5, and 7. Kurt. Yeah, Stretch, I'm going to the first time starter in here. The 8 at 6 to 1. I like that the full sibling was a five-time winner. Going 6 to a mile distance. And... Uh, I just think this horse, that good workout, it just might show speed in here. And that's what you're gonna want going five and a half. I also like Dragon Wing and Sassy Storming, but I'm gonna give you the eight. Good luck here in race six. Front gates are open for number one, Spears T. Who's about ready to go in? Next up, Wits Queso. Zebo's now in. Halo's Phenomenon steps up and in. Sassy's Stormin is also in. Next up, the six to five favorite. That's Dragon Wing. Just two left to load. Betting on Bell. And now just waiting on always the little one, the first time starter. 
to the outside. They're all set. They're at the post. Spears T fractures in the starting gate. Unseating rider Antonio Whitehall. And now he climbs back aboard. They're at the post once again. And they're off. Breaking very slow was Halo's Phenomenon. It's about 30 lengths back. Quickly right out to the front end. That's always the little one. Who's now up by three. Back in second, Sassy Stormin, betting on Bell. Close up in third, another length back. That's going to be Zebo and Wits Queso. And two more to Spears T and Dragon Wing. The opening quarter, 23 and 2. Always the little one. Cutting out the fractions and still up by three lengths. Betting on Bell in an all-out drive from second. Sassy storming back to third and trying to rally Zebo in fourth. They hit the head of the lane. Always a little one with the lead. Betting on Bell. Gonna try and run her down as they have just a sixteenth of a mile to go. It's always a little one. Betting on Bell. Well timed is gonna win it. Always a little one second best. Sassy Storming in third and fourth to Zebo. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold all tickets. There's a Stewart's inquiry into the running of race number six. The Stewart's supposed to number seven, betting on Bell as your race winner. Second goes to number eight, always the little one. Third to number five, Sassy Storm. And then fourth to number three, Zebo. They went the opening quarter 23 and two. The half 47 and four. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 108 and one. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stewart's inquiry is into the start of race number six. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner here in race number six, that's number seven, Betting on Bell. Betting on Bell is a Bay Philly, three years old, by Klempt. Out of the mare, mining for mercury by The Factor. Owned by Andy Stronach, trained by Jennifer Jordan, and ridden an unofficial victory by Siobhan Bell. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 108 and one.
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the inquiry is into the start of number four, Halo's Phenomenon, here in race number six. Ladies and gentlemen, after viewing the films, the stewards are removing the inquiry sign off the board. 7853 will become official. In the upcoming seventh race, jackpot, high five wagering. There are no changes. The jackpot high five carryover just over $22,000. Well, after the final race, be sure to head up to the clubhouse where our popular crazy hour kicks in. Beer, shots, and wine, just $3.95 and half-price appetizers, plus 140 VLTs ready for action until 1 a.m.
Welcome back down the paddock for race number seven. We have a $3,500 claimer. For the boys, three and up, they're gonna go seven and a half furlongs. Quick look back at race number six. Did you bet on Bell? I did bet on Bell, and I have bet on Bell in the pick four. That's or did you just bet against my horse because you knew it wasn't going to win? Well, uh, it hey, hasn't, been, hasn't been your day. I, I, full credit, you, I give you full credit on a very good pick. Horse ran huge and, and just got tired late, and, and that's, uh, yeah, a good talent. Yeah, good. that's the way my day's been going. Yeah, that's okay. It's, it's a long week. It's, uh, that's okay. I'm warming up. You, let's let's call it that. At yeah, least. you're pacing yourself. Yeah. Pacing yourself. That's what it's all about. Yeah, hopefully the wife has some money for tomorrow. All right. We'll find <laughs> out. We'll see if you show up tomorrow. Okay. Race seven. Uh, a real good race. It's been a good sequence uh, all evening. I have landed on, on the favorite in this one. We've been beating some favorites all day long, which has been good. Uh, it makes the payout, the, the pick force paying 1072 I believe. There's a reason why I know that. <laughs> oh, because you're alive. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so why I like this horse is because of, we've talked about it all year, about a horse that changes the running style. This horse got caught in a duel last time, showed good, good, uh, good pace at a higher level, now drops back down. Yes, there's races that this horse goes to the lead, but the best couple... Three of the last, the throw out the last race and the one obviously that the, the gate the malfunction a bit there. Real good races sitting just off. And, and so the August 1st, July 18th, both those races are good enough to win in here. Gets that kind of trip. I think the horse is, is, is right there. Gets in the duel. You better find the closers. Yeah, no doubt. No, I'm thinking number three, my cowboy, has to go to the front as usual. And number eight, all for truth. So both of them, I see ding dong and on the front end to set up for someone to come off it. Rail splitter last time out was that horse sitting behind, but got into the speed a little too early. The winner of that race, maybe sometime came from dead last in there. Ridem was sitting about fifth, four lengths off it and made the good rally for second. But I'm looking for something at a bit more of a price and I went to number four, Barley Boy. We're getting 12 to 1 right now. Barley Boy, three outs ago, got the job done for me at 8 to 1. Came back with a flat effort, but the speed all stuck around that day. And then the last race was the one I liked the best against My Cowboy. Horse jumps up to 5,000. My Cowboy goes wire to wire, but came from dead last to run fourth, beating three and a half lengths. If Barley Boy can show that kind of race once again, I think there's going to be a hot pace in here and a closer's going to get it done. This horse might go off at 20 to one at post time. That's fair. We, we've got him a few times uh, this year and last year because we talked about how good a closer he, closer he is. I've got to mention the three. Yes, there is a lot of speed. I don't disagree with you at all. But this horse didn't have a perfect trip last time, was in post nine, didn't get out sharp, got pressed, and then still hung on in his game. Has already won three races this year. And you just have to be ho careful of horses that like to win. And this is an example of one that uh, is sharp. We saw two back that went to, uh, a little too fast in a duel, which could happen today. But I never like to leave out a horse that is game. And if it gets the, the right trip, uh, especially with uh, Carino up top. Yeah, another horse I like, number six, Fulkerson. Two outs ago, this horse ran lights out. Fourth beaten three to Golden Eyed, Himmelstein, and life's been good so far. Any of those horses would be about uh, three to five, four to five in here, even with rail splitter. So Fulkerson ran that good race last time out, got shuffled back, tried to rally, but just couldn't do it. You have Siobhan Bell, who just won the last race. Falkerson going off at eight to one right now. That's reasonable, but this horse is running well. Absolutely. And so I'm going to go to the uh, the Plum Lucky. Um, liked him last time. Obviously, big price, uh, no price at all last time. But this horse belongs at this level. And at this time of the year, the horse is kind of rounding into form, running well. And so just like Barley Boy, same type of horse. Gets the rail trip. The rail is where you want to be, apparently. And uh, 
that's an upset play for me to to be in the mix. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number seven. Stretch, start us off. Okay, we're going to play a trifecta in this last race to finish it off, and we're going to go one of the ones that I like to play that confuses Kurt, but that's okay. He's a little confused today anyway. Um, I'm confu- confused most <laughs> of the time, Stretch. Don't worry uh, one, about that. One dollar tri wheel, one, three, and five, and then we're going to go one, three, five, and six, and then we're going to go to the next step of one, three, five, six, and nine. Uh, to complete the try, that's thirty-six dollars. I'll take your word for it that it's thirty-six. I'm just doing an exactor box. I'm running out of money, so I'm taking two, four, five, six, boxing it up for twelve bucks. Good luck with all your wagers here in race seven, and we'll see you back tomorrow, six forty-five central for ASD Live. Horse are on the track for race number seven. They're going to go seven and a half furlongs for eleven thousand eight hundred dollars. Number one is Plum Lucky, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, with Sheldon Chickeness. Number two is Give a Little, owned by Stella Racing, trained by Stephen Gaskin, with Chavi and Chow. Number three is My Cowboy, owned by Kane Couture, trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Carreño. Number four is Barley Boy, owned by Wade Hagee and Kelly Wolfsfield, trained by Mike Taphorn with Ronald Alley. Number five is Rail Splitter, owned by Windancer Stable and Daryl Peranica, trained by Wendy Anderson with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Number six is Falkerson, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, with Siobhan Bell. Number seven is Captive Kitten, owned and trained by Victoria Morse, with Tyrone Nelson. Number eight is All for Truth, owned and trained by Perry Cavanaugh, with Neville Stevenson. Running out the field is number nine, Flash of Glory, owned by True North Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Alt. With Antonio Whitehall. Jackpot high five wagering here in race seven. They go to post in three minutes.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Closing it out on a exciting night, uh, set, going seven and a half furlongs. That's two turns here at ASD. Yes, the five is the favorite, but not a slam dunk. This horse has the class, I think is going to come off the pace. A couple of those races are easily good enough to win. If gets the right trip, should be right there. Others to watch out for is the three, one at a higher level and is dropping in class, just finding the right spot. There is other speed. You want a deep closer along the rail where that's the place to be? That's Plum Lucky, the one. He won't be close, but he'll be flying late. Five, three, one. Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you on number five rail splitter. That drop in class has worked all year long in producing winners. And I agree with you, won't go to the front. That's all about the three and the eight, going to battle it out early. And then Rail Splitter trying to take over with about three eighths of a mile to go. But I like a couple long shots. The four Barley Boy, watch for this horse, ran a great closing effort last time. And Fulkerson, the six, also ran a really good race two outs ago, both at 16 to 10 to one. Good luck here in race seven. Them in for the nightcap. Give a little. Walks in.
Next up, my cowboy. Barley Boy's turn. The six to five favorite. Rail Splitter ready to go in. Fulkerson's turn. Captive Kitten is now in. Just two left to load. All for truth. And just waiting on Flash of Glory. They're all set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the inside, my cowboy. Showing some early speed with give a little to the inside. All for truth. Is going to stalk that duel in third. Falkerson to the outside in fourth. Then it's Barley Boy and Rail Splitter running as a pair. Another length back. Sitting is Flash of Glory. Three more to Captive Kitten and Plum Lucky. You can see them all. The opening quarter, a quick 24 and 2. And give a little in my cowboy. They're still in a heated battle. All for Truth is moving up three wide. Right in behind them. That's Fulkerson and Rail Splitter. Then Barley Boys. Two more back. Make it up ground. Flash of Glory. Captive Kitten and Plum Lucky still can see them all. 49 and 1, the half mile. With Give a Little and My Cowboy. A sweeping move on the far outside. That's Captive Kitten engaging the leaders. Flash of Glory in a world of trouble. Now finally gets through. Captive Kitten with the lead. In between horses, that's going to be Flash of Glory. Rail Splitter coming late. Captive Kitten, a sixteenth of a mile to go. Good move on the turn, and it's going to get the win. Flash of Glory, second best. Third's going to go to Rail Splitter. Close for fourth and fifth between Barley Boy and Falkerson. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold all tickets. A Stewart's Inquiry here in race number seven. The Stewart's have posted number seven, Captive Kitten. Azure Race winner. Second goes to number nine, Flash of Glory. Third to number five, Rail Splitter. A photograph has been called to determine the fourth place finisher. They went the opening quarter 24 and two. The half 49 and one. Six furlongs, 115 and three. Time for the seven and a half furlongs, 136 and four.
Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner here in race seven, that's number seven, Captive Kitten. Captive Kitten is a chestnut gelding, seven years old, by Kitten's Joy, out of the Mare Southern Alibi, by Elusive Quality. Owned and trained by Victoria Morse, and ridden to victory by Tyrone Nelson. Time for the seven and a half furlongs, one thirty-six and four. Congratulations goes out to trainer Victoria Morse on her first lifetime win. Results of the photo show number six, Falkerson, finish in fourth, fifth, went to number four, Barley Boy. Ladies and gentlemen, after reviewing the films, the Stewarts are removing the inquiry sign off the board. Seven, nine, five, six, and four will become official. Well, now you can head up to the clubhouse to enjoy crazy hour on the second level, beer, shots, and wine, three ninety-five, and half-price appetizers. Racing resumes tomorrow and Wednesday at seven thirty.